Hi, my name is Robert. This video is designed to give you step-by-step -step detailed instructions on completing the task at hand. Please read the comments in the About section of this video. It has valuable information and updates. My YouTube channel has a disclaimer video that I encourage you to watch. And please, like, share, and subscribe. I hope you find what you're looking for. Thank you very much for watching. Okay, it's round two or perhaps round three on uh, chasing down my turbo inconsistent boosting problem. Over boosting one day, under boosting another. As you can see, I'm cruising down the highway about 55. I'm about to punch it so you can see where my boost gauge go and hopefully my tack as well. On the Volvo 850s, I've uh, talked to a lot of people that have various setups of boosting and have boost gauges hooked up separately from their uh, built-in boost gauge. And from talking to them and getting several feedback, it appears that these uh, boost gauges that are built in on the 850s uh, display boost in this kind of fashion. A third of the weight is about 5 pounds, two-thirds of the weight is about 10 pounds or 10 psi, and all the way to the edge of the white area to the right is about 15 pounds of boost. And uh, so when you're driving your 850 and you put your foot in it and your turbo spools up, you should be getting these kind of boost readings at watt. The uh, standard 850 is supposed to get about nine and a half pounds of boost, and your R 850 should get about ten and a half pounds of boost. And if you're getting more boost than that, and you don't have a tune, you could be over boosting. And if you're not getting as much boost as that ten pound line, then you're probably under boosting. And need to get that fixed. Due to the fact that I'm under boosting, I believe I may have a problem with my bypass valve either broken or has a leak in it. So I'm going to try to pull vacuum on it and replace it if necessary. I uh, hooked up a vacuum pump to my bypass valve down there, blow off valve they call it, and I had zero vacuum on it. I went to the salvage yard, uh, pulled vacuum on the bypass valve there, and I got a lot of vacuum. So I'm going to assume my diaphragm is torn. Let me show you what it looks like. Uh, because of my situation, I pulled the one off the junkyard. It would be better if you bought these, purchased these parts new. This is what that uh, blow off or bypass valve looked like when it's attached to the turbo. That's the little nipple that's on it that I pull vacuum from. When you look at the inside, there's a rubber diaphragm. It has a little hole in the middle of it, I think, that bleeds off pressure, and it's got a spring behind it. So, uh, when you pull this thing apart, I bet mine is torn. I'm gonna show you it in a, in a minute when I get it out. Uh, but, come on out. It's got a spring behind it and a little plastic piece and that's the housing for it and you know at certain pressures this will release and let air blow into the uh, intake manifold so let me work on getting mine off to see what kind of condition mine is in and uh, it's a little bit hard to access so I'm going to take a few parts off to get at it in this video I'm going to be replacing my bypass valve that's mounted on the front of my turbo. It's a little hard to access and even harder on vehicles that have all-wheel drive. But I'm going to pull off my intake tubing, remove my air intake box that my air filter is in, remove the turbo pressure uh, supply that goes over top of the motor. Then I'm going to use a 10 millimeter socket and box in wrench to slowly remove that uh, bypass valve cover so that I can access the bypass valve in there and swap it out and my case with a used one. So the first thing you do is remove this intake tube. You pull it back and pull it off of the bottom of the air box. If you have a throttle body 
cover, take a T25 and remove it. Uh, I'm going to be laying across the engine and I don't want to break mine. So I went on ahead and pulled it off. Next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the air box out of the way because I need that space to get to these bolts. So I'm going to unplug the mass airflow sensor. I'm going to take this loose with a 7 millimeter. I'm going to unscrew the uh, BCS from the side of the box and I'm going to lift the box out and out of the way. When you take the air box out, be careful not to let the back of it get hung up on things. Uh, sometimes the clip will try to clip on something else and uh, make sure you got your coil wire loose from the back of the air box. Also, the front of the air box is attached to these clips. So once you get everything loose, you jerk up the front of it and it'll come loose from these. Then the back of it has a pin that sticks to through this fender mount and then you lift it up like that. But once you get it up a little bit, you'll take the two screws out of this BCS and of course you wanna unplug the electrical connector off of it so that it doesn't get abused or jerked around or any of the wires damaged on that. Next, I found it necessary to take the uh, turbo intake hose out. So you take the vacuum line off of the bottom of that if you have one connected to it and then get a seven millimeter down on the base of it on the back side unscrew it and then you take the two pcv lines loose from it you unplug the ptc valve and take the uh, ports off of it so take out this intake tube so here's your turbo intake tube removed. You have the clamp up top at the map. You have the air line here, vacuum line there. You got your PTC valve plug loose and you take your uh, PCV lines off of there and then take the lower clamp loose and then work it out of there. Once you have this intake tube off, it's good to check the uh, PTC make sure it's not clogged you could run a piece of wire through there make sure you can see it through here and uh, make sure your tube is not damaged anywhere or cracked if this tube has a uh, cracks or holes in it you'll lose performance maybe economy and stuff like that that's my turbo intake there and this is my bypass valve down here now it's a little hard to get to those 10 millimeter bolts on that thing and as you can see it's real dirty but uh, it is possible. Just try to make sure you don't damage anything else when you're taking those uh, lines loose and taking that valve loose. I see a major struggle getting this valve loose with this tubing here on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this tube out. I got a seven millimeter there, 10 millimeter there, and a seven millimeter on the back side of it. The short, short hose. I actually grabbed that short hose while I was at the salvage yard just in case mine was bad. This one looks in pretty good shape, so I might swap that out as well. Okay, with this turbo bypass tube off, I have a lot clearer shot at getting those bolts off of that valve there. Work you uh, 10 millimeter sockets or boxing wrenches down there and take the three bolts out of that valve. Okay, I got the housing loose, all three bolts out. All I can say is wish me the best in getting that lower bolt started. But I'm going to go ahead and pull that diaphragm out and see what kind of condition it's in. It looks like I have a small hole in it from the quick glance I did. Here's the diaphragm from the one I got from the salvage yard. It doesn't appear to have any holes or anything in it. It seems a little flexible. Here's the uh, diaphragm from the one I just pulled out of my car. It seems a lot harder and stiffer. And it does have a hole in it. Let me show that to you. This hole is going right here. And when I pull up on the diaphragm, you can see the daylight through it. So it has a little slit hole in it. That's probably where my boost pressure is bypassing. I don't see really any differences in the spring other than this one seems to be a little harder. Plus this one doesn't have a little hole in the middle like this one has. So maybe this that has something to do with it too so i'm gonna go ahead and drop this one into my turbo 
discard this one and see what happens to it but right there in the middle this one does not have a hole it's got something in there and this one clearly has a hole going clear through okay I got the vacuum back on top of the uh, wastegate I got my valve installed now I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall all my tubing and stuff I had to take my gloves off to get those bolts started but I did get them started pretty quick so it took me 15 minutes to get that valve off. Let me tell you how long it took me to get it back on. Looks like it took about 18 minutes or 20 minutes to get it back on. Okay, I got everything back together. I'm going to go and uh, test drive the car here in a little bit. And if I have any other boosting problems, I'll let you know. I'm getting ready to put my foot in it. It will show you the boost level. And there's some things on the gauge, RPMs, uh, horsepower, load, and throttle position. So, here goes. Looks like it's boosting about 15 PSI or 12 PSI right there for a few seconds. If you feel that this information was useful, please like it and share it with your social media friends. You can subscribe to my channel so that you will get notifications of future videos that I post. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you need to contact me directly, please visit my website. And if you have any questions, leave them below, and someone or myself will reply to them. Again, thank you very much for watching.